So Swamiji is in favor of that. So manifest the divinity within you. And everything will be harmoniously arranged around it. So he was talking about divinity already presenting it. So it is a wonderful idea, uh, rather it's an experience, and it is present in our scriptures also. That divinity is already present. You need not to need not to manufacture. It is already there. Only there is a curtain over it. And if we have the ability to remove the curtain, then the divinity will come out. Suppose there is a sun. We know that sun is there. And if if the if our eyes are covered by clouds, we cannot see the sun. That time we cannot say that sun is absent. Because the cloud is covering our eyes, we cannot see the sun. If we can remove or if anyway the cloud is removed, then we can see the sun. That bright sunlight is also available. So here it is the same thing. So divinity is always within everybody. Only it is uh, covered by some dirt or some cotton. So uh, Swamiji is mentioning that, and then everything will be harmoniously arranged around it. Then other things will be gradually will be shining around it. So this is his idea, and it is his experience, and it is the experience of the great rishis of our ancestors and the, all our ancestors what they have said so this is about manifestation of the divinity we were discussing about nutrition so we were discussing about the types of nutrition here in this way so we will be discussing about the types of nutrition we talked about that so types of nutrition classifying once more check with your copies so two types of types of nutrition once were one was one is autotropic another is heterotropic autotropic who can produce uh, food organic molecules with the help of energy and inorganic components and those who cannot they are heterotropic so autotropic and then heterotropic classifying heterotropic into three groups parasitic symbiotic and saprotrophic uh, we mentioned that it should be saprotrophic instead of saprophyte because saprophyte considers only plants but we are considering all the five kingdoms of the living organism so that's why we should mention saprotrophic considering everyone so parasitic can be classified into three groups fungi plant and animal similarly we can symbiotic we can group a symbiotic is a relationship between two groups of organism or two types of organisms so symbiotic we are classifying at least into four heads bacteria plant Bacteria is Monera kingdom. Bacteria and plant is from the planty group. Bacteria and animals. Plant and fungi both are different groups and also with the animal animals. So within the same group, but different organisms can also have a relationship. So these are all relationship based on nutrition, not any other occasion. So heterotrophic relation, uh, saprotrophic. So in case of saprotrophic, we can classify according to the three heads fungi plant and animal now we have this we also talked about rather only give the examples so autotrophic all trees surrounding us may most of them are autotrophic like mango guava etc then talking about the parasitic then fungi plant and animals all examples are like claviceps cascuta and liver fluke bacteria plant rhizobium bacteria and the pea plant we will be coming to that point so bacteria and animal E. coli and human, plant fungi, lichen, animal, animal, sea anyone and anyone fish. In saprotrophic fungus agaricus, very common to us, the mushroom, uh, common mushroom, and then plant monotropa, animal artworm. So these are the basic uh, classification of the types of nutrition and their examples, at least one type of example, one set. Then we were talking about the heterotropic nutrition. Hetero means different and different. So heterotropic nutrition are like this, and it from the Greek word heteros means other, and that is the name of all this group. So there are some some plants who can also go for autotrophic nutrition, but they have some requirements for the nitrogen which can be collected by killing insects or some other animals. So we have seen that. So that was another partly there may be a heterotropic organism. We do not say that plants all are completely autotropic. There are some plants who are partly heterotropic in 
in nature and known as mostly insectivorous plants we talked about checked with this in the in the nature how they catch prey and like venus flytrap then pitcher plant all were discussed so pitcher plant is also a member of indian family you can say it is present in kashi hills of meghalaya and that's why having a species name kashiana note that nepenthes kashiana is there and also talked about sundew and many others like here bladderwort and all that now we will start with the parasitic nutrition the first head of the heterotrophic nutrition so parasitic nutrition one is under the heterotrophic nutrition who will be parasitic doing the parasitic nutrition known as parasites also the mode of nutrition in which organism extract nourishment from other organisms so here the very departure from the autotrophic they cannot produce any organic molecules they are simply collecting the organic food stuff from other organisms so important is they are extracting it from others so this is parasitic nutrition certainly we should go for the examples also to understand and remember so mode of nutrition here so all kit plus considering all groups all, all living organism groups so they are parasitic in nature who extract organic substance from other organism so this is the one type of heterotrophic nutrition dependent on another organism for their nutrition then that's why you can remember it properly now uh, quickly writing i will come to the examples with pictures that's why you can remember it better first one so here how to identify also if you can see under microscope sometimes you can identify also so left side is one type of fungus this is known as claviceps purpurea and the right side it is the wheat showing our gut disease when wheat having argot disease you will find that if you check in under the microscope you will find the claviceps purpurea may be there so claviceps purpurea is a fungus drawing the nourishment from the wheat plant so it's a kind of parasitic nutrition so name and where we can find and both are all in our locality may be also available you can also see it so fungi this type of fun sometimes in many occasions we find fungi are having parasitic they having different also but one time we will find parasitic uh, mode of nutrition is also available in fungi so claviceps purpurea uh, this is one important example like try to write it down and if i ask you or in any exam if it is coming then you can produce it so you should be careful about it. should write it okay so claviceps is this plant disease then next one this is known as bracket fungi it is coming as like bracket so they can also do harm and not only for small plants they can do harm for the very tall plants as well they are known as genoderma so genoderma developing on the root trunk or the, the trunk of the plants and gradually penetrating it drawing the nourishment from the plant and finally it can kill the very tall plant so there is a parasitic mode of nutrition here in genoderma one type of fungus so genoderma is this one type of fungus <clears throat> next one i will come to this parasitic fungus is another type of fungus this is another type of fungus if we can uh, sometimes we find it in our locality also you will find this uh, they are developing here so this is known as oyster cap oyster cap the common name is oyster cap so oyster like fungus that's why they are known as oyster cap scientific name will be different but very commonly known as oyster cap because it is easier to understand and to know and uh, and mention so this is oyster oyster perhaps you know that this is another animal we can find it in sea oyster from where we get the pearl so oyster like it is that's why it is known as oyster so that is also a par parasitic fungi then one plant is here golden in color i would like to know the name of the plant which is golden in color i think understand this thing also sometimes these are all important 
So cascuta, uh, there are several species. I would, uh, yes, okay. Yes, okay, go on, please. But Actually, you must be prepared for that in the, in the, in the competitive exams and some other places when, when you grow more, you will find more concepts are required and it should be from the very beginning. So cascuta, it is uh, correctly identified as cascuta or the daughter plant, golden in color, but they are devoid of chlorophyll and that's why they are parasitic in nature. But parasitic, but one important feature of the plants they are having, that is nice flowers are coming up. Check that nice flowers are there. Flower is one of the character of the plants we find. So that's why you can classify as plant, a very basic, so check flowering plant. Cascuta is a flowering plant, write it down. Cascuta is a flowering plant, though uh, these are not autotrophic in nature, most of the plants having the characteristics of autotrophic, maybe partially heterotrophic in case of insectivorous, but that will not be the case here. But still, we have to classify as plant because they are having flowers, very nice, beautiful flowers, and also other things, like another thing, I would just come to here. There is one important characteristics of parasitic, this type of plant, this, they should have hostoria. Hostoria is a special type of roots. These are all roots. Special type of roots. What speciality is there? If we find internally, now check this one, we have come into the inside of the host plant. So inside the host plant, this, the root of this cascuta is entering up to the flowing part from which the host plants are getting their organic molecules, sucrose, etc. So this host plant pipeline for foodstuff, the hostoria are penetrating up to that level to draw the nourishment from there. So there, this cascuta or daughter plant having roots also and special type of root known as hostoria in plural. In singular, it will be hostorium. So hostorium with the cascuta, when we go under the microscope in the anatomical thing, so that time we will find this type of thing, okay? So hostorium and here. One picture is here. I would like to know what is the name of the plant. Uh, can anyone say what is the name of the place here, the biggest flower. So this is the biggest flower here. And Rafflesia, I will find very, so two flowers are shown here. And check the length. What should be the diameter? See, even the child, or maybe your hand also cannot touch the center from the outside. So very big enough, very big. It is Rafflesia flower. Though big flower is there, but plant is parasitic in, in nutritional mode. So flower may be of 100 centimeters in diameter and weight may be 10 kilograms, so very difficult to lift off. So this is the plant, this big flower, but mode of nutrition will be here, parasitic. That means they will draw nutrition from other they will draw or they draw nutrition from others. So this is one type of variation in the nature. You can get many things. So, so different, different here also one thing here. So Rafflesia flower, the biggest flower show to say, and it is like this and the mode of nutrition in this plant will be a parasitic. So parasitic mode of, in questions it is coming, identify the following plants who are parasitic in nature. You will find several very common names and among them it may be Rafflesia. So we have to find that Rafflesia is there or something like that, flowering plants. Now check how Rafflesia is growing on the trunk of a plant. Rafflesia growing on the trunk of a plant to draw the nourishment from the host plant. So these are all about parasitic flowering plants. We are talking about parasitic flowering plants, fungi, 
Now this is one thing, one thing, can you identify? Is it possible to identify this one? Yes, go on. One is difficult. So it is your here, plasmodium, the malarial germ. We are all afraid of that because if there is a mosquito bite and carrying the malaria germ, we are finding difficult. And so malaria is this. So malarial germ known as plasmodium, write the name. And I will also try to show you how they create problem. How they create problem for us. I would like to show you, please see this. Uh, when a <clears throat> when a mosquito when a mosquito is <clears throat> a mosquito is uh, biting a healthy person and the mosquito carrying the plasmodium germ when what will happen so this when after biting then they will put does their saliva and in their saliva Generally, they, if there is uh, this germ, then they, they always infect this germ. So germ enter, so germs enter the blood of the human, the, that healthy person, and then it come to the liver. In the liver, so liver cells get affected. This germ uh, will develop more. They will multiply and they will change. So there will be certain change, and then after that, that germ, that change part, it, they will infect RBC, erythrocyte, red blood cell. There, again, there will be some changes of this germ. S some changes, and then from that change, they will also develop something more. So some changes are going on, and then again, they multiply it. And this multiply, so germs are more in number and that will burst the RBC and then come out to the bloodstream. That time the patient gets shivering, fever, severing due to fever. So this is the how it creates a problem. So this is germ is coming out from the RBC, bursting out, RBC is killed and they will travel throughout the body with the blood. And there will be more changes in the germ and then after change so they will be ready within the blood in the in the patient body so there are several changes of this germ plasmodium and again if there is a bite if there is a mosquito who bites this disease person then what will happen then in that mosquito that they this mosquito will get this infected germ but then germ will not do any will not affect the mosquito it will remain there with some change and then it will come to this body of the mosquito and they will come they will make some changes some more multiplications and they will come for next time for ready invasion next time if, the, if this mosquito bites another one another healthy person then that person will get malarial germ so this is the this is the transmission of the malarial germ so malarial germs are parasitic in nature so they draws nourishment from other so plasmodium vivax there are several species so plasmodium malarial germ Another one I would like to understand. Can you see and can you name that germ? Can you know what, what we generally find in sometimes in human and generally in the infants, babies, kids. So what is that? Liver fluke. Liver fluke. This one, this flat like leaf like structure. This is liver fluke. Platy helminthes group under animal kingdom. Phylum plati helminthes. If you have heard that, remember that the example is liver fluke. So this is also having they draw nourished, completely digested fruit from our intestine. They need not to digest anything. They will completely take off digested fruit from the intestine. So those children having more liver fluke, they cannot grow properly because digested food is taken up by the liver fluke. So they have to be treated with some medicine or some precautionary measures should be taken. 
so many are there uh, we can see many 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 are there many consumers around us we can see many mammals lions polar bears cheetahs birds are like that. many are there so all are consumers so they can draw draw like this now saprotrophic nutrition saprotrophic this will be paracoccus it's a bacteria i will just first with the saprotrophic the mode of nutrition what is that saprotrophic nutrition the mode of nutrition in which organisms break down the complex organic compounds very carefully listen to me first breakdown of the complex organic compounds organic compounds of dead organisms or organic compounds do not write breakdown of organisms very cautiously think about that breakdown of complex organic compounds of dead organisms or organic compounds please write it so these are the things we should so saprotrophic nutrition is this examples examples are vital examples already mentioned paracoccus denitrifications if you have heard about it or read the nitrogen cycle nitrogen is liberated from the dead organisms uh, after their passing or from their different other sources so that time nitrogen is coming back to the atmosphere once again and for that paracoccus is helpful so name is denitrification for that also saprotrophs the name of or the origin of this name you can derive it from the greek word sapros that rotten and trophos a feeder these are also known as decomposers reducers and especially they are mentioned as decomposers as questions are coming who are the decomposers choose it from the following group of examples so you have to choose that and sometimes they are in the pairs in one pair you will find one is autotroph another is saprotroph so you should reject that sometimes it is they said from the each group from the group both of them are saprotroph then you have to identify where is that a type of examples are given so these are now penicillium pseudomonas in name pseudomonas p is silent p will be silent like pneumonia but in writing you have to read it, write it so penicillium pseudomonas paracoccus all are saprotrophs these are very important all are important in any ecosystem but these are also having making things available to the autotrophs once more otherwise this should be only collected in the organism's body cannot be available for the autotrophs to generate food stuffs once more or for other organisms also to collect it for their development and growth of the body so saprotrophic nutrition some examples and to remember that uh, quickly try to write quickly see once again i have shown you and try to quickly write uh, quick enough those who are writing little slow please write in your home uh, quickly and other classes too in the school that's why you can write fast in exam also so saprotrophic nutrition now we will pass very common example i think everybody knows this one as mushroom agaricus agaricus generally we are sometimes very familiar with there are several edible mushroom generally plant, people used to eat it edible mushroom in india we are having very common the left side one which is known as agaricus bisporus or bisporus and the japanese people used to take up so bisporus agaricus bisporus is the left side and the right side common japanese edible mushroom so many people are fond of eating mushroom so there are several types all are not edible there are some are having toxic elements so we should avoid them so edible fungi questions are also asked 
among the following fungi who are edible please note if there is a agaricus bisporus is there or not agaricus bisporus must be there just to note a few uh, fungi i would like to show you some examples fungi different types of fungi how do they look like <clears throat> red capped then yellow capped sulfur like many are there i would like to show you several of them only check it how several types of there so fly agaric then sulfur tuft several types of fungi are there no need to write only just check how are they look how are they looking like how are they then these are rusula and then wax cap many colored varieties are there nice to look at and several are there so fungi are there more many of them are having different types of modes we only talked about first parasitic and then coming to the saprotrophic now now another one is oyster mushroom common oyster mushroom and uh, some are common oyster mushroom those who are having oyster like structure so try to see if we is so getting the common oyster mushroom left side then right side is star shaped so common oyster mushroom and then right side is star shaped so they are having common name as star fungus all are available in india and sometimes they are used for food star fungus and another one this is i think if you can see it i would like to know the name from you so the name of this one how to identify also that is important this is yeast yeast is a single celled fungus also remember yeast is single celled fungus saprotrophic in nature so when from one cell another cell is coming out like bud after that maturation they will detach from the mother and they can they can live independently after detachment you can find this type of scars or some some sort of notch here yeast is single celled fungus please write it down this is coming in our exams many time name one single cell fungus where you find saprotrophic nutrition it is coming from a different angle very specific so yeast is a single cell fungus having saprotrophic nutrition remember this one so yeast now when yeast i would like to see another question so here also the left side is yeast and when yeast is infecting grapes i think your place having grapes plants more when yeast infected grapes you will find some watery part is coming up outside the fruits so you can understand there may be some infection and that may be caused by yeast so yeast infected grapes will look like having some watery droplets outside yeast is doing this one now those who were fond of talking about penicillium earlier time now check this one how to identify penicillium now so this is our left side penicillium having broom stick like top broom stick like top so this should be known as penicillium under microscope we will find this and here right side when penicillium infected orange or lemon or like that sometimes if you find if you have kept lemon for few days maybe one two three four days also so you'll find some green patches are coming up or white patches are coming up then you may be sure enough that these are infected by the penicillium so penicillium is looking like that but penicillium not only infecting one thing but penicillium having very crucial thing they can produce one medicine help in production of medicine what is the name of that that antibiotic which is drawn from penicillium Anyone? so the name of the antibiotic is penicillin which is available in penicillium now check with other examples we are talking about that saprotrophic nutrition in i would like to show you one angiosperm means flowering plant monotropa this is also a very peculiar example generally asked give one flowering plant where we find saprotrophic nutrition 
generally plants are having autotrophic nutrition but uh, that's why we also talked about earlier insectivorous also so here one is here as saprotrophic so by rotting things they can draw nourishment monotropa and angiosperm very beautiful flowers are coming up now symbiosis symbiosis uh, i would like to show you one thing first and then to come up with the examples so i would first to come up with one thing check this one we are talking about one group of organisms so check this one we have come here one so check this one can you identify this one so these are in one two organisms we are observing one is on the left side and another group of organisms blackish in color on the right side identify this so what are they doing also try to understand so what are the two organisms two types one is here so here another organism here so try to identify this organism if you can do it so these are organisms now ants are here and one is beetle uh, insect ants are trying to remove the beetle insect from nearby because why so ants are trying to force this beetle insect to go outside uh, but uh, it is hard to do that because slippery body but somehow they managed to put him uh, put it down and but in uh, insect are protecting insect that ant are protecting one group of animals here these animals are aphid giving sugary juice from there so as sugary juice is coming from them that aphid which is collected by the ant and they like it and that's why they keep the aphids on the plant body but while they are protecting these aphids from the danger of that beetle type beetle like insect so symbiosis sometimes for food need nourishment both can help each other or one at least getting the benefit so symbiosis mode of nutrition generally generally we find it when two organisms either dependent each other or at least one is dependent on another for nourishment so this is your symbiosis so from the definition also we can do that so this is your symbiosis now trying to go through the examples with pictures symbiosis if we very common examples like right side in the nodules in the root we find in case of many leguminous plants like pea so pea plant if you find in the noodle in the nodules under the microscope you will find rhizobium bacteria rhizobium is the bacteria having a symbiotic relationship of pea plant rhizobium bacteria will produce nitrate salts from the atmospheric nitrogen and it will be provided to the pea plant in, and against that pea plant will provide food for this bacteria so by both of them they they will get help this is one type of lichen lichen is a combination of fungi fungus and algae or fungi and algae so both of them together will will help each other for nourishment and they can survive this way so this is one type of lichen lichen are very different types of lichen are there lichen is a group name there are several types of lichen and like this orange star lichen so two types of things are there green lichen are also there so several types of lichen are here no need to write only to note that there are several types of lichen i would just like to show you and different colors different combinations and different shapes like this is old man's beard lichen like this and orange cap lichen or orange lichen so many are like so there are several types of lichen <clears throat> looking different shape and one is also important here here one important is cow 
and cellulose digesting prokaryotes and protists. Two groups are mentioned. Cow along with there in the digestive tract, they will find you can find that prokaryotes who can actually digest this cellulose part of the plants. Generally, you find that cows are fond of eating grass or fodder like things where plant plant cells are having cellulose. That cellulose is to be digested by some other groups, generally by prokaryotes or protists present in the elementary tract of this cow. So if you find it here in the first initially the the cow used to take up the food quickly and then they will put it here. So here it will be finding the uh, different prokaryotes and protists are there. They will digest the cellulose and then it will again come in back and then again chew it and then it will be taken to the for further digestion. Symbiosis with bacteria animal here, one animal is here and one bacterium is also mentioned. Can you say which bacterium and who is the animal having symbiotic relationship with this bacterium? Just quickly raise hand and I give the answer. One animal is having a relationship with symbiosis. Uh, name the bacteria and the animal. Uh, yes, fine. Say. E. coli. E. coli and hu human. Yes, very fine. Thank you, Zid. E. coli and human. So E. coli and human both are having relationship. Escherichia coli, the full name of the bacteria, uh, Escherichia coli, uh, produces vitamin B12 for human being, and instead, or uh, in turn, uh, in return, they will receive digested food from human as they are living in the intestine. So symbiosis, bacteria, and animal. So we have mentioning this type of. Another one is here. Though in this occasion, only one animal will receive the benefit, other will not receive. This animal, this all bullocks or rhinoceros, they will not receive anything. On their body, some insects are there, and that insects are written up by these birds, egret birds. Egrets are getting the benefit of nourishment, but from them, uh, this animal, that these mammals are not getting anything. This one and to go for.